Hi guys, Dr. H here, your source of advanced musculoskeletal care, and today I want to start out this series of videos by talking about something called tensegrity. This is a term you've probably never heard of, most of your doctors have never heard of, but it's an incredibly important concept in musculoskeletal medicine, and how it relates to how I would treat a lot of what you'd be coming in to see me for, back pain, shoulder pain, and so forth. So tensegrity is sort of a combination of, of two terms, tension and integrity. And it's really a geometric or architectural concept. It was coined back in the 1920s by a guy named Buckminster Fuller. And it was about his vision of, of how he would like to see architecture head. Now, the definition of tensegrity is kind of complicated, and I don't really want to go into it. It's a lot easier to explain using a model. So I've got this model here. This is actually from something called Tensegrity, which is to help teach tensegrity. And the important thing to notice about this model is you have rigid structures, in this case, these sticks, and they are being held in place by these more flexible structures, in this case, rubber bands. Now, it's important to notice that the sticks don't touch each other. They're not being held up by each other. Instead, it's the integrity of the stick under the compression or the tension force of the rubber bands, hence tensegrity. And the important thing to note is that even though these rigid sticks don't touch each other, they're just suspended within this tension, they're very, very stable. So I can take this model and I can squish it, I can pull it, twist it, do whatever I want to it, and it still comes back relatively to the same area. So what does this have to do with you and your body? Well, to understand that, we've got to understand the history a little bit of how we've tried to figure out how the body works. So if you look at the body from sort of a Newtonian perspective and Newtonian physics as this skeleton that is your structure and then you have soft tissue muscles that act like pulleys going across your, your levers, your joints, and they pull and move your joints. But really the, the structure comes from your skeleton. If you look at the body that way and then try to do the math and the physics behind it, it doesn't add up. So if you consider, for example, a 200-pound person picking 400 pounds off the floor, maybe they're a weightlifter doing a deadlift, and you calculate the amount of pressure that they would feel in their lower back or the amount of force that, and sheer force that their lower back would have to withstand to be able to do that, the numbers are insane. The, the, the tissues in your body are not meant to deal with that kind of force. Another great example is gymnasts. You, know, you see the Olympics and you can see what gymnasts do on bars or rings and, and all that, that kind of force just isn't feasible if the body is looked at from this sort of Newtonian perspective of, of a skeletal structure that has pulleys attached to its joints. So it was in the 1950s to 70s or so that people started applying Buckminster Fuller concept of tensegrity to the human body. And if you look at the human body as a tensegritist system, also called biotensegrity, things make a lot more sense. So instead of thinking about it as a skeleton that is your support structure with these pulleys attached to it, think of it more like this model, where your skeleton is the, the sticks, the rigid structures, and it's suspended within the flexible, the tension structures, which is your soft tissue, your, your myofascia, if you will. And so your skeleton kind of floats inside your body, as opposed to being compressed on top of itself. Um, this is not a, a new concept, even at MIT they're using the concept of tensegrity to do robotics because they're finding the same problems that I just mentioned, that if you use sort of a Newtonian construct it's a lot more difficult and a lot less efficient than using like a tensegrity model. So how does tensegrity relate to your musculoskeletal problems, your back pain, your shoulder pain, your hip pain for example? Well going back to this model here, you're probably familiar with the term that everything's connected, but most people think about that term in the sense of that like old song where you know the leg bone's connected to the hip bone, and the hip bone's connected to this bone, and again you're looking at it the wrong way. You're looking at it as if bones are stacked on top of each other, and really they're suspended. They float in this system, but everything is still connected. As you can see, if I move any part of this system, the whole structure is affected. So let's take for an example that uh, you have this part here representing the arch of your left foot. Now the arch is maintained, like everything else in the body, by this tensegrity. But let's say this area, for whatever reason, it fails, the tensegrity fails. 
And we'll represent that by kind of twisting this up. Do you see how when I do that, the whole system has to change in order to maintain uh, stability and integrity? So let's take, for example, this stick over here. Do you see how when I twist this band, that stick changes position? So again, this is the arch of your left foot. Let's say this stick is your right hip. So when the arch of your left foot fails, the right hip has to change its position to maintain this tensegrity. Well, your right hip wasn't meant to be in this new position. Now it's kind of out of whack and it's going to be undergoing forces it wasn't meant to receive. It's going to be in a position it wasn't meant to be in. And as a result, it's going to undergo wear and tear. It's going to hurt. And so you go to your primary care doc or whoever and they, they take an image of your hip, an x-ray of your hip because it hurts. And sure enough, they find things like arthritis or degenerative changes in your hips. And they say, well, then, yep, there's your problem. Uh, we can inject it with steroids, that'll make it feel a little better, or we can get you a new one. But the problem isn't really at the hip. Sure, that's where your pain's at. The problem, though, is, again, in this example, in the arch of that left foot. And it's my job as a musculoskeletal specialist to find that, to see you and say, well, you seem to be a fit, healthy person. Uh, there's really no reason that your hip should be in this kind of shape right now. Where else could there be a problem? And the thing that can make it a little tricky is even though it was the arch of your left foot that collapsed, that's not necessarily painful. It's this poor hip over here that's trying to maintain structure and stability that's going to get uh, painful. So if I were to twist this up like we were doing before and change the position of the hip and then fix that, if I were to let go here, the whole structure goes back to where it was supposed to be. Now I know what you're thinking, well the damage was done at my hip, and that is true. You know, I can't necessarily reverse the arthritis or the degenerative changes at the hip. But remember, bones are not stacked on each other like we think they are. This concept of bone on bone isn't exactly true. And so maybe your hip, when it was in this wacky position, was being compressed against a bony structure of your pelvis and kind of wearing and tearing on that. But as we fix the tensegrity, it can float again, it can be suspended again and therefore you can release that pressure and hopefully help with that pain. So you can see now why if you come to visit a doc like myself, a musculoskeletal doc, with hip pain, I might be down there working on your left foot. You can say, hey doc, I thought you went to anatomy classes. I thought you knew the difference between my hip and my foot. It's my hip that hurts, not my foot. But now you have a better understanding of why I might be working on your foot. Sure, I'll work on your hip and I can make your hip feel better, but if I don't fix that foot, it's going to feel better for like a week or two and it's going to come right back because the problem hasn't been treated. And the problem in this one particular example was the arch of the left foot. Now you might be asking, well, how in the world would you find that? And the answer to that is if you imagine having a, a king sheet, right, from a bed, like a king bed, and you put it on the floor and you pick up one end of it and you close your eyes. And then you have your buddy come and put a rock somewhere on the sheet that's still on the ground. And then, without opening your eyes, you pull on that sheet. Well, guess what? With a fair amount of accuracy, you'll be able to tell where that rock is on that sheet. And the reason is, is you can feel that pull, and your body can tell you where that is. And it's the same thing when I'm working on you. I can feel where in your body these restrictions are. Because even though this left foot area that collapsed may not be painful, it is going to cause an, an aberration. It's going to cause a restriction. And I can feel that just by, you know, pulling on your legs, moving your shoulders, seeing how you walk, seeing how you move and get an idea of where that problem might be and then go and fix it. Um, this is why a lot of people get back pain. We're going to talk about this in another video, um, but you need to understand this concept of tensegrity first before I can talk about this in another video. But the back is usually the last resort when it comes to areas of the body having a collapse in their tensegrity, and it's trying to maintain that structure and therefore it becomes painful. The other areas of the body are not necessarily painful. A common way or a common example I give to people is if you imagine two people carrying something very, very heavy and one person drops their end, that person isn't suffering. In fact, they probably feel better because they got to put down the heavy thing. It's the poor person who's trying to hold up the other end that's, that's really suffering now. And it's the same thing. The, the area that's a problem not necessarily, in fact, most of the times isn't painful uh, until you kind of start getting in there. Whereas the area that's trying to compensate for that problem is the one that's suffering. And so I'm hoping that this idea will help you understand the next uh, few videos that I'm going to be putting out for you on different concepts. But again, this tensegrity concept is so vital to understanding everything else, I wanted to put it out first. All right, I hope that makes sense. I hope that wasn't uh, too boring for you. And in the meantime, keep moving.